Hello fellow animation addicts, I'm Morgan with the Rotoscopers, your number one place to get your animation fix for Disney, DreamWorks, Pixar, and everything in between. In today's video, I'm talking all things Toy Story, specifically Sarge and the Green Army Men. So if you ever wondered what happened to those guys, then keep on watching. like me, you may have wondered what happened to Sarge and the other Green Army men when they left Andy's house. They couldn't have just been floating around and flying around for the entirety of the movie to finally arrive at Sunnyside Daycare and meet Barbie and Ken in the epilogue. There has to have been more to the story, right? Well, turns out there is. I was actually reading some bedtime stories to my son and I was telling him some Toy Story stories from this book. Now this is a five in one collection of books that had previously been released. And I was very surprised when I came across this book called Move Out. Now Move Out actually tells us everything that happened after they left Andy's house. Where did they go? What happened? What did they do? It is all right here. But before we get into that, let's talk about what happened to the rest of Sarge's troops, the rest of the Green Army Men. Because we know in Toy Story 1, Andy actually had an entire bucket of army troops, and they actually play an integral part in the first movie to go on an undercover mission to discover what toys Andy is getting for his birthday. So what happened to the troops where they went from an entire bucketful, literally an army of little Green Army Men that basically Woody could have at his disposal and command? Because let's be honest, Woody at that time was kind of a tyrant to only having three army men left at the beginning of Toy Story 3. Now Sarge actually tells us and gives us some hints and clues about what happened to the rest of his troops right before he leaves. Let's face it, when the trash bags come out, we army guys are the first to go. So connecting the dots here, I imagine the trash bags have come out quite a few times as Andy was growing up and as Andy's mom wanted to clean up the crap. And trust me, as a mom, I totally get it. You want to clean up this crap all the time, every day. Let's just get rid of it. I feel like the maid. I just cleaned up this mess. Can we keep it clean for, for 10 minutes? <laughs> so we can assume that over the years, a few army men at a time got put into the bag, whether because they were stepped on or they were broken or they were just collateral damage, slowly went from a bucket of army men to just three. So that basically sums up what happened to the bucket of little green army men. So now let's jump to where Sarge and his troops went before they made it to Sunnyside. So like I said before, where we're getting all of this detail from is this book called Move Out. And you're probably thinking, Morgan, they create all sorts of books and merchandise for these films. Why on earth would this one be considered canon? Well, there is one reason specifically, and it's the author of this book. Unlike many other books that are just adaptations of the movie and the things we've already know and see on screen, or they're just original stories that are written by someone, this book is different because it's based on an original story by Jason Katz. Now, who is Jason Katz, you might ask? Good question. He was actually the head of story for Toy Story 3. So this is based on his story, and he was the head of story for Toy Story 3, so I kind of think he knows what he's talking about. And this was probably backstory that they created to flesh out these characters, but ultimately made it on the cutting room floor. So after Woody and the gang attempt one more time to get teenage Andy's attention and it fails, they concede and realize that it's time to accept their fate and they need to move into their next phase of life, which is the attic. At this point, Sarge and his troops say, heck no, no way. They climb onto the windowsill and they say that line, which I mentioned before, which is when the trash bags come out, the green army men are the first to go. They give Buzz and Woody a salute and they say that it's been an honor to have playtime with them over the years. And with that, they open their parachutes and off they go. They jump up the window, they soar in the air, and they are on the hunt for a new home. They first land at a toy store, which may look pretty familiar. It is Sal's Toy Barn, which is under new ownership. Now this name change and this under new management banner is actually kind of interesting because we know that Al's Toy Barn went out of business at the end of Toy Story 2, and 10 years had passed between the events of Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3. So was this business and building vacant for 10 years and it's finally under new management? Did the new owners just leave this banner up for 10 years. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but if you want me to do a video on the history of Al's Toy Barn and what happened, then let me know down below. So they arrive at Al's Toy Barn, and from the book, it tells us that they are looking for a new child to take them home. So what better place than a toy store? The army men sneak inside the toy store and they see a boy and his mom with a bunch of bags, and they decide that is the kid who they want to go home with. The little boy is actually carrying a toy army helicopter, so he is definitely 
clearly in their target demographic. It's clear that he's into army men. So the army men stowing away and joining this boy would most likely be a good fit. The story says that they hide inside the boy's bag and they are going to go home with him. Or so they think. But it turns out the little boy does not go home. They actually make a stop at the bakery. The little boy drops his bags and the army men are on the floor while the boy and his mom are doing something at the bakery. It seems like the little boy wants a donut is all fixated on that because who doesn't love donuts? While the little boy is eating his donut, the army men decide to look around, but at that point, the baker sees them and decides, hey, I'm gonna put them on this army birthday cake. Now we don't know if the baker finds them on the floor or perhaps they climbed onto the counter, which if they were on the floor, that is totally gross because it doesn't go and say that he cleaned them or washed them or anything. So don't go to that bakery, okay? Let's just know. It then says that he puts the cake in the freezer and they get really cold. And there's some Easter eggs here. There are some other kids' birthday cakes. There is a Cars themed Mater birthday cake and a Finding Nemo birthday cake. Turns out the people in Andy City are really big Pixar fans. Well. It makes sense because they're all within the same universe. Am I right? <laughs> The book then goes on to say that the next day the cake is taken to a birthday party and it's a birthday party at where else would you have it if you were a little boy? Pizza Planet. Pizza Planet? Oh, cool. It then says that Sarge sees a boy, Sarge has a plan, Sarge and the troops will go home with the boy. And at first when I saw this, I thought, well, no duh, you're going home with the boy. It's the same exact boy. But it turns out that even though they are little boys who look nearly identical with their brown hair, one has blue eyes and one has green eyes. So it seems the other little boy from the toy store was now out of the picture. So they set their sights on this new birthday party kid, which thank goodness for them, he is also into all things army. So Sarge watches the boy and they wait and wait and wait, but then the little boy starts running to the exit of Pizza Planet. The troops desperately try to catch up to the boy, but he is too fast and they cannot catch him. So they are boyless yet again. But I'm super confused because if I had made a birthday cake for my son, I would definitely keep all of the free toys that came on the birthday cake because that's free toys for a little kid who'd be so excited. Like who just leaves them on the table hanging around? I mean, come on, mom. You gotta be smarter than that. Birthday cake toys are free toys. Double prizes! Sarge is still desperate to find this little boy. So he comes up with another plan. He spots a Pizza Planet truck and he decides that he is going to use the Pizza Planet truck to catch up to the boy. Sarge gives an order and the troops follow suit and they jump on board. Now, unlike Buzz and Woody when they stowed away in a pizza truck or Buzz and Ham and everyone else from Toy Story 2, all of those guys, they ended up going inside the truck. You are safe and protected inside the truck. But unfortunately for Sarge and the army men, they went on top of the truck. So once the truck started going, their parachutes deployed and they blew away yet again. This time they land on a gas station, good old Dynaco, and they decide since it is nighttime, they are going to camp out for the night. Sarge hears a loud noise which wakes him up, and the next thing he knows, he's being dragged away by everyone's friendly neighborhood trash man, Sid. Somehow they must have ended up on the ground next to the trash can, which if you were a toy, don't you think you would avoid trash at all costs? We are not camping out next to trash, okay? Because we know where trash goes, and we know where toys left on the ground go, in the trash. Sid tosses all the trash, including Sarge, into the garbage truck, and then they drive away. Now the two other troops that were left behind, they go on a rescue mission to rescue Sarge. They climb up on the top of the garbage truck before it drives away. They make an army man chain and they reach for Sarge and Sarge is safe. With Sarge safe and sound, they hop off the truck and they land on a wall to a playground. Now this isn't just any playground, this, which we know if you've seen Toy Story 3, this is the playground to Sunnyside. At this point, they must jump off the wall, deploy their parachutes and float down next to everyone's new favorite Sunnyside dictators, Barbie and Ken. Do you think they're going to turn into dictators? Do you think the cycle of dictatorship will continue with Barbie and Ken? Let me know in the comments below. I mean, I know they're not really dictators, but we've seen this time and time again. Everyone starts with good intentions, but absolute power corrupts and power corrupts absolutely. So the book ends saying that there are kids at Sunnyside, which was the whole goal of the mission was to find new kids to find a new home. And they are now at home at Sunnyside. All right, so the mystery has been solved. That is exactly what happened to Sarge and the other little green army men in the Toy Story franchise, but specifically where they went in 
in Toy Story 3. Now, let me know in the comments below, do you think this story is canon? You already know my thoughts on the matter, but let's keep the discussion going. Also, I'm excited to be back to be doing more of these Pixar theory, Disney theory, all sorts of analysis of our favorite animated films. So if you have an idea or a topic that you want me to cover in my next video, let me know down below. Should I talk about Sal's toy barn? Could be pretty interesting. If you found this video interesting, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to join our animation tribe of fellow animation addicts just like you. We do reviews and all sorts of Disney Pixar analysis on this channel. Now, if that doesn't satisfy your animation itch, then be sure to subscribe to the Animation Addicts podcast where we do movie reviews of all sorts of animation movies. And of course, be sure to check out these two other videos for more animation fun. That's all I have for today. I'm Morgan and this is the Rotoscopers YouTube.